Welcome to Crip Ritual. A multimedia exhibition curated by Cassandra Hartblay, Amy Hamrai, and Jara Mesh of the Critical Design Lab. Presented at Tangled Art Gallery in Toronto, Canada. Hi, I'm Heidi Prasad. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm the gallery manager for Tangled Art Plus Visibility. I'm Jack Hawk, he, him pronouns, and I'm the outreach coordinator here at Tangled Art and Disability. And we are at the tactile piece of this installation. The Story of My World by Maryam Hafizirad tells the artist's journey as a deaf Iranian adult through colorful ceramic hands. The gold plating on select fingers references the preciousness and magic of sign communication. When I moved to Canada, I was exposed to American Sign Language and became immersed in the sign language of my people and found my identity as a deaf woman. The artist is suggesting that accessing the deaf community through sign language is a ritual process of its own. Two works by Malcolm Corley, Untitled Number no. One and Hoodie Self Portrait, might be thought of as rituals of self representation, in which Corley reproduces photographic selfies through careful painterly study. These selfie paintings pointedly return the viewer's gaze, a potent crip ritual in a world where disabled people are often treated as objects. My name is Malcolm. I like to see. Accompanying Malcolm's pieces is an audio portrait entitled Mal Sounds. This was created in collaboration with composer Maria Thompson Corley, Malcolm's mother. This is friends. This is a monocular photographs by Hannah Sheehan, and these were taken with an iPhone 6. Um, Hannah Sheehan's monocular photographs is a set of digital images taken on an iPhone 6 shot through a monocular, a single lens capable of zooming in and out. Sheehan, who is someone with low vision, uses various objects, such as her monocular, kaleidoscopes, and even an electron microscope, to play with distance, framing, selection, and texture. But it creates a bit of a vignette. Sheehan describes how she once felt that using the monocular was an unusual experience, until realizing that all people use tools to mediate and interpret the outside world. In this piece, These Are My Cars by uh, Logan and Hannah Quinn, uh, you come into the corner to a very intimate space with a video of Logan on video. Logan's play entails lining up his cars across his table and driving them in sequences and patterns. In the video, we see Logan at play with his cars. The gallery featured a mock-up of Logan's table at home, on which the cars are stacked in the configuration and patterns that Logan normally places them. Audience members are invited to join in the ritual by playing with the cars. This is uh, Margot Feldman's piece. Soft Magic by Margot Feldman brings to life three different containers, each with their own rituals. At the first station, Anchor, participants can engage with the objects of Margot's altar piece and rearrange them, a tactile engagement that brings them into connection with their surroundings. At the second station, Affirm, participants are invited to write down their fears, select an affirmation card, and thus create space for their fears to be honored and held together with others. At the final station, Contain, Sculptures. It's functional for the heart. Yeah. A video of Margot building a container made of pillows and blankets in their bedroom invites visitors to build their own container with the pillows and blankets provided. So this is With? And with is a collection of 20 images by four artists. Cassidy Bankson, Faye Harnest, Earl LeBlanc, and Don McLeod. 
the collective, who are all members of the Brain Injury Society of Toronto, adapt the exquisite corpse game, where players contribute to a drawing without seeing what the others have done. Um, to that piece. The crip ritual of art making shows the creativity and innovation that disabled people employ to find strategies for survival and togetherness across distances. The entire corpse is built and embodied through all of their combined works. All of those pieces are now gifts. I've gifted every knitted piece that I've read to, which is kind of exciting. This is Jess Watkins speaking. I'm the artist. In Jess Watkins' piece, you would scan the QR code and you would actually be able to listen. Knitting to listen. I thought I would give you a bit of background as to how this piece came to be. Artist Jessica Watkins, who became blind in her teenage years, knits while listening to academic audiobooks for her university studies. In a basket are a collection of scarves, each representing one book. When I was 14 years old, I was diagnosed with a rare eye condition. Watkins describes knitting as a way to stay focused, as she prefers kinesthetic or tactile learning to listening alone. I was about to start my undergrad. There's a lot of reading. And there wasn't anything other than the sounds to keep me awake. My roommate taught me to knit. The motion of knitting becomes an act of reading. This work demonstrates the ways in which access hacks and other crip workarounds become ritualized through repetition. I was knitting. I wasn't reading the scarves. But now if you touched any of them, if I did, I could tell you what pieces I was reading. I was reading. I was reading. We invite visitors to consider what kinds of crip rituals are represented in these works and resonate in their own lives. In these works, we find rituals of activism, rituals of care, rituals for managing the way others perceive you, and rituals of joy and celebration. What's your crip ritual? A second half of this exhibition was presented at the Doris McCarthy Gallery. Full information can be found on the website, www.cripritual.com. 